I struggled with cars. I struggled with driving my car to work. And so <laughs> the whole three months, I was like, oh my God, I hate my car, like driving it to work. And I hate cars as a section. Hey, this is Andrea from Medlife Mastery. And today I'm going to be telling you all about my MCAT journey. To start off, I kind of want to preface by saying that I would not recommend for people to do what I did because when I first started studying for the MCAT, I was working a full-time job too. And this was in between semesters. You know, it was semester from junior year to senior year. Like that summer is when I did the MCAT. So not only was I burnt out from school, I was also working full-time and commuting two hours to work, which was a lot. A little bit of background about me is I'm actually an immigrant from Mexico. And one thing that this caused was I struggled with cars a lot because English is not my first language. And even though I'm definitely Definitely comfortable with English now and being bilingual is hard. Knowing two languages I feel like narrows my vocabulary compared to someone who only knows English. I would recommend for those who have like the time and resources that you spend your time just studying for the MCAT because even just studying for the MCAT alone is a lot. Don't do what I did. But if you need to, I mean, I'm testament like it's doable. There's a couple of things that helped me get there and I want to share them with you all. First thing that I kind of realized is like that MCAT is a test of persistence. Obviously it matters like if you're intelligent, if you grasp the content. But I think, I think at the end of the day, anyone can do well on the MCAT because it's a test of persistence. I think they're testing, can you study for this many months and try to just practice the same thing over and over again? Because you're going to need that for medicines. I think that the most important thing is to keep trying because honestly, it's a very discouraging process. I was discouraged a lot. I hit like a score plateau, like I can get over like 508. But I think once I realized like, Okay, the MCAT's a test of persistence. They're testing how much you want it. So I would just keep that in mind and let that motivate you. <laughs> That's what, I mean, everyone has their own unique motivation for me. It was like, I kind of took the mentality of like, oh, they think I can't do it. I'm going to prove them wrong that I can do it. Um, and everyone has their own thing, but that was just mine. But at Life Mastery has tutoring and we also have a free strategy email. It's in the link below if you all want to check it out. I'm also a tutor, so if you would like some tutoring, I'm definitely available and you can get that through the MedLife website. Another important thing that I did is I really analyze my mistakes and I think this is another way that the MCAT's a test of persistence because you get tired of making the same mistakes, analyzing the same mistakes and being like, okay, I keep getting this type of question wrong, like it's so annoying, I'm frustrated, I'm gonna move on. But it's important to keep going over those mistakes no matter how frustrating it gets and it definitely got very frustrating for me i struggled with cars i kept missing like oh like be on the text questions and stuff like that but then in my head i was like persistence you gotta keep going and it's easier said than done obviously everyone has like those motivation barriers when you're studying for the mcat and i think for me what helped me get through it was I heavily relied on my friends. I would complain to them all the time. And I think people sometimes look at complaining as like a sort of negative thing. And sometimes it can be, but when you're studying with the MCAT, ranting and letting it all out, I think is a good way to go about it because you know, if you're just studying and being frustrated all day and you have no outlet, it's gonna be hard. So definitely rely on your friends family, your pets, anything. And another thing that I really relied on when I was studying for the MCAT was running. And people hate running, I know, but I I mean, I recommend some sort of exercise while you're studying because it's a great stress reliever. And it's like, I don't even know how it works, but I'll be so stressed out and I'll be like, oh my God, I'm taking a full life tomorrow. I'm really dreading that and I'm really nervous to see how I'm gonna do but I would go on a run and then all my worries would kind of just go away. And I was like, how does this even work? But just remember, try your very best. That's all you can do. Try your very best to balance studying, your work, your friends. And I think that's kind of how I figured it out. I was able to manage my time in a way that, you know, I had to say no to like friend hangouts sometimes, but I still went as much as I believed I could while still getting my studying done. This kind of worked out for me. I ended up getting a 522. I literally, when I found out, I was leaving my my class and I was like, oh my God, I came out, my MCAT score came out. Then I sat in the corner and I opened it and I started crying, but like tears of joy, like tears of relief. I, I just want to say if, if I could do it, balancing all my things, not having English as a first language and just, you know, still do well on the MCAT. I think y'all can do it too. I truly believe in all of you and I really think anyone can do great on the MCAT. And with that being said, thank you.